I'm going to go straight on uh, today's top business news now. And for that, here I'm joined in the studio by Brian Quint from the France 24 Business Desk, taking, uh, talking a lot about Pakistan's big election today. Whatever the outcome, the next government is going to face major economic challenges, isn't it? Uh, indeed, Stuart, a country of 241 million people, a $340 billion per year economy that has actually been in crisis for years now. A massive uh, flood in 2022 destroyed some 2 million hectares of agricultural land, devastating the country's cotton fields. Pakistan's textile industry is its chief export driver. The country struggling under a mountain of debt. It owes foreign creditors around $77 billion within three years. $24 billion of that is due by June. Foreign reserves amount to only around $8 billion. Some 37% of the population lives below the poverty line, with Pakistan near the bottom of the UN's development index. Inflation, meanwhile, hit new records last year, driven by skyrocketing energy and fuel prices. Matthew Mary Carachet takes a closer look. This man has been a rickshaw driver in Lahore for 20 years, but he says he's never had so much trouble making ends meet. When I go home, my family asks for money, and I don't have money to give to them. I argue with my family because I have to buy petrol and food. It is very difficult to survive. In Pakistan, inflation has been reaching unsustainable levels. Year over year, price increases are hovering near 30 percent, after peaking at 38 percent last May. Indeed, the rupee has been in free fall for almost three years. The squeeze can be felt in this small shop famous for meat and cheese naan. The cost of the food is definitely increased in Pakistan. Being educated, I earn a lot. Even then, nowadays, I cannot afford the restaurant. The difficulties compound as prices have increased for electricity, water and commodities. Due to inflation, our customer flow has changed. We have fewer customers. After the cost of ingredients increased, we raised the prices of our naan. This shop has increased the price of its naan four times in the past two years. With each increase, the store claims to lose a few hundred daily customers. Deeply in debt, Pakistan came close to default this summer before being bailed out by the IMF. In exchange, the IMF asked the government to cut subsidies that had cushioned inflation for the population. Well, to China next, where the government is battling not inflation, but rather deflation, while consumer prices in January rose by a modest three-tenths of a percent. They were down eight-tenths of a percent on an annual basis. That's the fastest rate in 15 years. The Chinese economy has been struggling with deflation since July, hurting corporate earnings and worsening an ongoing rout in the country's stock markets, which have lost some $6 trillion in value over the past three years. Deflation is also hurting the Chinese real estate market as homebuyers watch their investments lose value, the phenomenon threatening to exacerbate a raft of debt defaults among China's top property developers. Some of the uh, big companies, including Evergrande, are um, seriously in debt, and more and more may come. So this is the key thing that affecting the stock market itself. Because as we all know, uh, the real estate market, um, the negative wealth effects may affect the consumer behavior and, expanded, and expenditures. And finally, for business, Disney's latest quarterly earnings report showed better than expected earnings. That's largely due to cost cutting, though, rather than revenue growth. CEO Bob Iger says he's seeking to boost those stagnant revenues with a number of deals. First, a new sports streaming platform launching in coordination with competitors Fox and Warner Brothers. Next, a $1.5 billion investment into Epic Games that will see players of the popular Fortnite video game able to interact with characters from Disney properties like Pixar, Marvel and Star Wars. Disney Plus, the streaming service, lost 1.3 million subscribers last quarter. Those who stayed, though, will be getting access to an exclusive extended version of pop superstar Taylor Swift's era's uh, concert tour film. And that's, that's it for Swiftness. To, I mean, business. <laughs> it wouldn't be business if we didn't talk a little bit about, about Taylor, Taylor Swift Smith's. once a day, yeah. at least. Lucky them being yeah. able to do that. Thanks. Yeah. All right, Brian Gray with the business team.